What are you doing in my swamp? Hello everybody, this is Overboy, and I'm going to be doing my review for the 1995 movie, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. Uh, so this movie is directed by Joe Chappelle, and picks up a few years after the events of Halloween 5. Uh, the Man in Black had uh, taken Michael and Jamie and stuff, and... There's this whole cult of thorn thing that's introduced into this movie and everything, but anyway, uh, after killing Jamie, Michael returns to, uh, returns to Haddonfield and starts to stalk the Strode family, uh, who are like cousins of Flory Strode, uh, and in order to kill his last surviving relatives, and, uh, Dr. Loomis pursues him once more to to try to stop him in with the help of Tommy Doyle. Uh, and the movie uh, kind of goes into history on Michael and uh, his immortality and what drives him to kill and stuff and everything with the Coal of Thorn and everything. Uh, but this movie is just okay. I wouldn't say that... I, I think it's a terrible movie, but I don't think it's a great one either. It's just one of the ones that's alright. To me, it's kind of like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, where it's not really a bad movie. It's just kind of forgettable um, and everything. I don't, I'm don't. i never bored with it when I watch it. I think it's fine and everything, but I'm not like super entertained either and everything. And usually, after watching it, I usually forget what happens in it, except for a few certain scenes. Um, but... The, the cast in here are, are, for the most part, decent. Uh, uh, Donald Pleasance gives a really good performance his last time playing Dr. Loomis, although I wouldn't say it's my favorite performance of him as a character, but I think he did good in it and everything. And you could kind of see that he was sick and stuff a little bit in this movie. I don't know exactly what Donald Pleasance died from, but he died before the movie came out. Uh, but I think that he... Um, was good in here uh, and everything and it was cool getting to see him one last time uh, Paul Rudd is Tommy Doyle his, his mixed bag for me like he's really really not you can tell that he's not been acting very long when he did this movie I think uh, this was like the first movie where he's like one of the main characters like a starring role but he, uh, it's like I think Clueless came out the same year and it came out a couple of months before this, but this was one of his first roles and his acting in this movie is its kind of funny and stuff to watch, like how, how different of an actor he became and as he's become bigger and become the Paul Rudd we know and love. He wasn't quite there yet in this movie, but he still has that likable charm to him that Paul Rudd has. So. At least you got that, and I think he's pretty good in here. And uh, Marion Hagen is Cara Strode, who is one of Lori's cousins. It's uh, and the mother of Danny Strode, who Mike is one of the one, Michael's after both of them and stuff throughout the the movie. And he kills uh, a lot of the other Strode family members, the mom and dad, and uh, Cara's brother. But uh, I think Cara Strode is a decent character. She's not very memorable though to be honest um, but she's fine and uh, George P. Wilbur returned to play Michael and I think he's even better in this one than he was in Halloween 4 and of course also he has a much better mask in this movie I actually love the mask in Halloween the Curse of Michael Myers it's one of the best masks in the franchise to be honest I love it and I think that uh, George P. Wilbur was excellent as Michael in this one he's brutal and he got some really good kills and stuff because the MPA wasn't really messing with horror movies as bad in the 90s, so you get some really good kills in here. Um, I love the scene in the hospital when the lights are flashing and he's killing all the nurses and stuff, although I wish the lights weren't flashing because it really is hard to watch that scene and everything, but it kind of gives me a headache every time I watch it, but I love that scene. And like the scene when he kills uh, 
Deborah Strode in the sheets and stuff. Just really awesome scene. And uh, John Strode gets a brutal kill too. So like all the kills in here are pretty decent and everything. It makes up for for the lackluster story and everything. And I think the movie could have been a lot better and a lot worse. It, it's just one of those that I think is okay. It's one that probably the only time I really watch it is when I watch the when I watch the other movies. I haven't seen the producer's cut yet. I'm uh, wanting to see it really bad and everything. I, I've been trying to find it. It's not very easy to find so uh, but eventually once I do find the producer's cut I'm gonna give it a shot and see if I think it's any better and everything but I think this movie is decent enough the the my biggest complaint on this movie is how they handled Jamie Lloyd and everything she was like the main character of the last two movies and stuff and then they bring her back in this movie and they don't bring Danielle Harris back because the, the producers and stuff were jerks and uh, didn't want to pay Danielle Harris and everything they, they just wanted to pay her a thousand dollars to film for one week and everything because it, they said she was a throwaway character and stuff which was really insulting to not only Danielle Harris but the character of Jamie Lloyd because like Jamie carried the last two movies and everything and they, they kind of screwed her over she even got herself emancipated and stuff so she could be in the movie and and just it, it was stupid that they they really screwed over J Danielle Harris and everything and uh, recasted her with JC Brandy who does the best she can with what she has to work with uh, you could tell they didn't really care about Jamie as a character and stuff and I don't really blame the actress she did did what she could with it and everything but the writing and stuff uh, it was a big disservice to this character and stuff like like the Weinsteins just love to disrespect characters that have big parts in the franchise you see that later in uh, some of the other Halloween movies that came out in the next few years and stuff so uh, what they did with Jamie really is annoying and really takes the movie down a little bit for me and stuff but um, and everything. I, I really just don't like the way she, they handled her character and everything. And originally, she was going to be like one of the main characters and be there till the, not get killed off till the end of the movie, which is what they should have done. And everything. They should have kept Danielle Harris and made her as important of a part as she was and stuff. So, and there's a subplot with. Uh, Jamie's baby and that's one of the reasons why Michael is after them he's trying to get Jamie's baby and everything and it's indicated that he's the father of the baby and everything because Dr. Wynn uh, who we find out is the man in black uh, impregnated her with using Michael's DNA and stuff it, it, it's it's really weird the, the whole Cold of Thorn thing I don't fully understand it to be honest with you it, it, it's always kind of kind of been weird for me and everything but uh, I, I like this movie but it's not one of my favorites Billy Dixon's cinematography though he did a really great job on the cinematography it, it kind of felt like it fit in with the cinematography of the first two movies in a way and I really did like that about it and everything it has some of the best cinematography in the franchise and like I said in the patrol of Michael is great but uh, aside from that most of the stuff is forgettable except for of course this being Paul Rudd's first movie and he's credited as Paul Steven Rudd which I think is it's kind of kind of humorous for some reason and everything it, it's always humorous when you see actors who have their full names as and stuff when they first start out and then they change like Vanessa Hudgens uh, did in High School Musical hers was Vanessa Ann Hudgens and then she changed it to just Vanessa Hudgens after she became big and stuff it's, it's, it's kind of something about that I've always found humorous and stuff like like that but uh, but yeah th this movie is alright I, I didn't care too much for the ending though like it, it kind of just left on, on a cliffhanger that it's never going to be resolved and everything which personally I, if they do any more direct sequels to other movies in the franchise I'd rather them uh, do ones either to Halloween 4 or 5 and maybe re redo a sequel to 5 and everything 
might have a better story, but uh, personally, I, I don't know that they can or will ever do that, but uh, I think this is an okay movie. It, it's definitely worth watching if you're a Halloween fan, but it's not like one of the best movies in the franchise and everything. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. I would give it a 7 out of 10 and stuff, but I'm docking it for the way they treated Jamie and stuff and Daniel Harris. I really hated the way they did that, the character and, and did her. So, uh, but aside from that, I think it's an okay movie. It's watchable, but it's also really forgettable too. It's just not one that I, uh, out of all the Halloween movies, this one is the least memorable to me. Like I, I can remember stuff from all the other ones, but this one I remember very little about except for how they disrespected Jamie's character and uh, Paul Rudd. Really, those are the main things I remember about this movie and everything. So, uh, anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, and I hope you enjoy this video, and have a good day, everybody.